Today we're going to discuss groups. Groups is a tool inside of Canvas that allows you, the teacher, to create a small group of students that can work independently on a task or a project. When you create a group for a set of students, it gives the students their own calendar, their own files, their own discussion, their own collaboration, their own pages, and their own announcements. Let's get started. To create a group, you're going to be in the People section of your course. So, for example, you're going to have People here. You'll see your students and your co-teachers. You'll click on Groups. You'll create a group set. This group set is not the name of each group. It is the name of the reason for the groups. So, in this one, we're going to have a project called Personal Narrative. Now, there's this option here for self-sign-up. If you allow self-sign-up, you must have the People section the people section here must be visible, meaning there's not an eye with a line through it. If the people section is not visible, then that means students would not be able to use the self sign up. You hit save. I'm going to create the groups manually. So now I've created my reason for the group. Now I'm going to create the different groups. There's going to be a podcast option for this project. There's going to be an essay option for this project. And there's going to be a documentary option for this project, a day in the life. As the teacher, I'm going to go ahead and assign students to this project. So I've assigned students in the group the type of project that they agreed to commit to. When you have students in the group, if you have more than one, you have the option to have three dots and select them as the leader. When you select a student as the leader, then that means that that student can submit the project on behalf of both students. You'll both, the same project will appear in SpeedGrader for you to give grades. Let's talk about that. So when you're creating an assignment, you can go down to any assignment that you've created or create a new one. When you're in the assignment, you have this option down here that says, this is a group assignment. When you check that box, it becomes a group assignment. You select the reason for the group assignment. Uh, this is my project. And then you could choose to assign grades to each student individually, or let it be that the same grade for one student in the group is for every student in the group. I'm going to assign grades individually. One option to note here, if you are using an external tool, you cannot make an external tool a group assignment. When you're all done, you're going to go ahead and save the assignment. And now when both students in that group view that assignment, only one of them has to submit it. The one who was designated a leader, if you designate someone as a leader. If you didn't designate someone as a leader, then they both need to submit. The other thing you can do with groups is you can do a discussion. So let's say, for example, you have a 30 students in your class and you have a discussion, but you want in smaller groups to have smaller discussions. So you can create a discussion. Again, we're going to use the same reason. Personal narrative. I'm going to give some prompts. Tell your story. And then I can choose to say this is a group discussion. Again, I select the groups that I'd like to pick from, so from the personal narrative group. I can go ahead and give it a date. It's available from today until next Friday. And now this discussion and how students respond will be inside of their small group. So for example, each one of these groups will get this discussion prompt. Only the students who were in that small group will be able to participate in that discussion. I can view what my students see by going back to my groups and clicking on the three dots, view visit group homepage. This is what they see as students. Now I want to put up content in here. I could create the page from scratch, but I can also go back to my course, scroll down to the content I have. Now there, typically, we like the ability to be able to three dots and copy to, but in this case, that is not available in Canvas as of now. So we'd have to go into the actual content, go into that rich content editor, 
Go ahead and select all of the content and copy. Now I can go back to my people, go back to my groups, go back to my home page, go back to my content, create one. paste. And now that page is also inside of here for my students. Now you don't need to do this as a teacher, you can empower your students to create their own pages because students would have that option. So let's look at that from the student perspective. When a student logs in, I'm logged in here as my daughter. When a student logs in, they have their regular class, and they can see that this discussion has been assigned, the one that was a group discussion. They could see that right over here they have a to-do list. They could visit that discussion and then respond to it right here inside of your course. But because remember I put them in small groups, only the two students in that small group can see it. But if we look over here and see as soon as I click that discussion, students have their own groups. So for all of the courses they are a member of, they can click on the different groups that they're a part of. They can then make their own announcements. They can make their own pages. They can view the people that are in their group. They can view, they can view the discussions that have been assigned, or they can start their own discussion. They can add their own files. They can use conferences, but of course we don't do conferences, so this is empty for them and they can start their own collaborations with the members that are in their group. So remember collaborations is Office 365 or Google Apps for Education. So that's an overview of how groups work.